Hello everyone, it's Chris here from the Southwest Shooters and this video has been made possible by my good friends at Crackshot in Newton Abbott. Now, this is going to be a controversial video, but I'm doing it for a good reason and I hope that you can see that. So currently I have on loan from them an FX Impact Mark II, which I consider a very high-end gun. I'm lucky enough to own my favourite gun in the world, which is a Daystate Red Wolf. And what I want to do is I want to show you one simple test. Okay. This is both guns being shot under identical conditions at 50 metres. And here's the interesting thing. I am using the same pellet in both guns, the JSB Heavy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you me shooting. You can watch me actually do it. It doesn't look elegant, but it's there. And then uh, we'll talk about it, okay? So let's look at the data. So I have both of the cards here in front of me, right? And I think that you will agree that there is not a lot in this, all right? I'm wearing a Daystate t-shirt, all right? This t-shirt was sent to me by Tony Belus himself from the review that I did of my Daystate Renegade. I love Daystates, okay? But make of that what you will. I would suggest that the Red Wolf is marginally tighter. You can be the judge. You can make some suggestions as to why I've said that if you'd like. But um, I pride myself on being honest with my shooting. All right, And everything that I say I could back up anywhere if needed. Um, but as I said, there isn't a great deal in it if I'm being completely honest with you. But both are around the size of a pound coin I would say that the Red Wolf is just marginally tighter. Now this may be because we're reaching the outer limits of my capabilities as a shooter which is absolutely fine okay and as I've said previously in other videos it might be due to the fact that I am on a workbench sitting on a log okay uh, you might be able to get better groupings under more ideal circumstances but at least I kept it the same for both guns so there you go maybe I do have a dog in this fight because I love day state guns so much um, so I'm but I'm, I'm actually admitting that on camera okay nothing against FX 
um, but you know how much I love day states. So there you go. There is two very high-end guns tested side by side, and for me at least, the Red Wolf is slightly tighter groupings. Now, in the spirit of being um, neutral and objective, the FX does have demonstrable benefits as opposed to the day state. Okay, now the big thing that I really love about the FX is the size of the magazine. That's phenomenal. Okay, to be able to get 38 shots is crazy. Also, um, I would imagine that you can get possibly slightly higher shot counts from the FX, and that might be really important to you. You'll notice that I don't have a moderator on my day state. The FX is by far the quietest gun I've ever used or heard or not heard, if you want to think about it like that, right? But I think I just need to say that in the sake of fairness. If you were to choose either of these guns, I promise you, you'd be getting a fantastic gun, okay? And you'd be very lucky to have one. I every day use my Day State Red Wolf. Right, I absolutely love that, that gun, and I'm so lucky to have it. I think it looks like the coolest thing in the world, and I'm super happy with that accuracy. And if I remember rightly, it's just... The grouping is comparable from memory to the FWB gun that I used a couple of weeks ago. Anyway, there you go. Have fun, happy shooting, and I'll see you soon. Take care, bye-bye. Okay, so I'm editing the video now and I finished by saying that the Red Wolf grouping was comparable to that of the FWB. I actually have the cards. So this is the FWB at 50 meters and this is the Red Wolf at 50 meters. And I think you can see that the FWB is in fact better. So I just wanted to clarify that right at the end of this video because I think it's quite important. That's it.